What is up gamers and gearheads? Brutality here to bring you an all new show that revolves around everything Gears of War eSports. We're going to call this Front Spawn and I'm going to be sitting down with a panel of experts. We're going to be going through a number of topics. So sit back, relax, and I hope you guys enjoy this new series. What's up guys? So today with me I have the Czars of Charisma, the Voices and Observers of Gears Esports. I'll let you guys go around the table. Guy, start us off. What is up everybody? I am Guy Blaze, a uh, Gears War commentator, uh, esports enthusiast, whatever you want to call me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of the show. Hi friends, John Fallout Kefalukas, uh, former professional Gears of War player, had a chance to work up at the Coalition as a community manager for a bit, and now I'm also a shoutcaster along with Blaze for the Gears of War Pro Circuit. Hi, I'm Rob Immortal Spawn, uh, former professional uh, Gears of War player, uh, current Gears of War analyst, competitor, observer, uh, all around a guru of the game. All right, so we're going to jump into our first topic of the day. We're going to talk a little bit about Escalation, the new t game type for Gears of War 4. Now, guys, do you favor Escalation over what we've had in the past? We had Execution and uh, brought in King of the Hill for Gears of War 3. Do you guys favor this game type over what we've had in the past? No, it's a, it's a horrible game type. We should be playing Execution, 45-minute <laughs> rounds. On I'm totally kidding. Escalation, guys, if you had a chance to watch MLG Columbus, the first display of Gears 4 Esports, it showed so well. We had so many clutch rounds, so many intense rounds. There's so much metagame, so much to analyze, so much to talk about as a commentator, and I know the players love it as well. I mean, this game mode blows anything we've ever had out of the water, in my opinion. Yeah, just <clears throat> the fact that the the fights are forced and, and where there's always something to play for, there's always... Uh, you know, a big objective, whether it's winning the round, but there's these small objectives and, and big meta time calls, and uh, there's really nonstop action. So uh, it's just amazing, amazing to play and, and really fun to watch, in my opinion. No, I, f I fully, I fully agree, man. You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta understand. You gotta in with the new, out with the old, and uh, you know, it was really no objective to execution, and it was uh, from a viewer standpoint and a, and a tournament standpoint, it was just bad. It was just so unpredictable. Uh, you had good moments. And you had a lot of whack moments as well. And uh, Escalation, you know, we've seen it play out both as how Domination would have played out, which a lot of people say was their favorite game type from Judgment, even though we don't speak of that no more. <laughs> uh, you have, you, we saw a lot how it plays out as ex, ex, I mean, execution as well in those later rounds where teams was, was like, yeah, they was building up points, but they was making it make, the, they was waiting to make those key execution pushes that we always see. So it has the objective that we, that we need to make it a, a good eSport. Yep. I agree with that, and you know, all I'm going to say is, if you have time in a game mode to stop what you're doing in an esports game mode and draw a smiley face on the wall with your lancer, <laughs> right? that's how you know you have a problem. I'm glad yeah. uh, Node Zero and, when, and the team were able yeah. to recognize that. And I've been surprised, honestly, by people's willingness to drop execution. I thought people loved it, and no one really has been complaining. I think we had we had some pushback early on of, of people like, no, nah, no, no change. Why, you know? Yeah, you guys are sellouts. You know, why are you giving up execution so easy? Yada yada, and those people have have, have uh, since silence since the games came out, and that yeah. we've saw, and since we've showcased it. I think I think we've experienced enough horror stories to know that we needed like a drastic change for for our esport to be successful. Yeah. And when money's on the line and, and things are like that it's happening, you know, everybody's been there. Everybody's been there, and and it sucks. Nobody wants to be a part of it from a player. Nobody wants to sit here and watch like a minute go by and. And, you know, filling time and things like that. Regardless of all that, we knew there had to be a drastic change. And, and the coalition stepped up um, and, and no zero with, a, with an amazing game type that is, is incredible uh, to play with, uh, with with the clutch moments in there. And, and it really is it's really a thriller, like, till the very end of each round. Yeah. One, yeah. One, thing I, one thing I will bring up, um, not to go off script entirely here, but I think, you know, provide some good conversation, yeah. some good banter, is do you think that Escalation should be the sole game type. Or if we could find another game type, not saying right now there's more game types, I'm saying in the future, if we could find another game type that's as good as Escalation, should we have multiple game types, or should we stick to the one game type philosophy that Counter-Strike Go League of Legends has? All right, well, so my <laughs> thing is, me personally, so over the years, I've had fun, you know, playing multiple different game types, and it's very challenging, right? 
Uh, but at the same time, it says if you don't have to do it, then you know don't do it. Like once, like we said, League of Legends they play the same game type. Counter Strike they play the same game type. Very successful. Um, you know, escalation being so long in, into thirteen rounds, it's hard to add something new into that mix. That's the one thing about League. League of Legends is yep. average forty minute game. Counter Strike first to thir- first to sixteen. All right, first 16 rounds. They're long games, uh, and so that's why you can't really add another game type in it. You would have to drastically cut down, ex- I mean, uh, escalation. You know, it would have to be instead of a first to seven, a first to five or four, and then you'll have to throw in something that's amazing. And, you know, and I always say that we had something that was like a, 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 you know, capture an object, take it to a point, you know, especially with the movement system and gears. I think that'd be, you know, that'd that'd be awesome. Agreed. Yep. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have some of your best moving players, you know, taking flag to a certain point or taking a bomb to close a uh, an, an immersion hole or something, you know, and just uh, just use that and highlight the movement system of the game into that game type. Yeah, make those players worth something. Now, as far as from a team standpoint, I mean, it, how is communication? Is it a lot faster? Um, is things done on the fly, kind of like they were in execution? How does how does that work? Yeah, so so now you have a fifth person with with five v five. True. So, yeah. You know, it's even more critical that you're not saying, uh, you know, anything that's not very valuable. You have to process, you know, an extra person on your team. So communication is is probably um, you know just as important as it's ever been. Uh, there there are these and and listening is key. So mm-hmm. like the one thing is you know, portraying your thoughts, but having your team listen and, and take quick action on it. If you're heads up play, like, yo, we're seeing three at this B hill. We got to, we got to be out. We got to be rotating. We got to make that call and go. So, I mean, this game type is, is just, is very, very dependent on communication and a team, like all being in sync. Escalation really exposes the weak links of your team. Mm. It exposes their internal issues. You know, they can, they can, as execution, they can get away with a lot of stuff, but now, uh, you expose them as a as a gamer of how fast can they think, how fast can they react, uh, how well can they play under pressure, and how well they can communicate. You know, execution you can get away with only having about one or two of those and yeah. not having the rest. Agreed. This game that's a really type, good point. Yeah, this game type you need all of them in order to be successful. Yeah, that's a good point, Blaze. You know, you send a player up top on canals, the player down low gets two kills. That player up top can play like ass the entire round, but still one player making a big play really saves is a lifeboat for that teammate that's not playing so good and doesn't expose him. So that's a really good point. On top of that, you know, one thing I'll say is you need five people on one team, and not to jump ahead of ourselves here, but I think Optic will not be beat until someone else can match this. Why Optic is so so good is they have five people on one team that can make a big play at any time. Then that are, you know if one one's playing bad, the rest pick them up. That all know when to make the right decision and why to make the right decision, when to rotate. You really need five leaders, five independent thinkers on one team. You can't have the player that's just a beast, but but just mind numbing up here. You know uh, everyone needs to be able to think on their feet, think quickly. That's what's really makes it interesting. So now, do all the players have to encompass every role? Usually we have you know the support, the slayer. Uh, you know, uh, power whip, someone that's good with power weapons, do they have to encompass all of those, or is that still abundant in, in the game type right now? Uh, well, it's not so much, uh, you know, they, they teams try to pre-plan out a little bit of what role you're going to fall in, but based off of how the game, the, the, um, the pace of the game goes throughout the entire match with weapons being placed and just uh, the, just certain situations you get yourself put in. You got to know how to play everything, you know. You got to know how to rotate back. You got to know how to be the anchor. Sometimes you're going to have to pick up the, pick up the power weapon. You're going to have to play every position, especially in those earlier rounds when the respawns are, are, are low and they're all over the place. Yeah. Uh, you really can't define yourself as just a support player and uh, – be a critical success to your team, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I would agree. I would agree with that, Blaze. Um, You know, I think the only one role that's been established, in my opinion, I think this might change as the metagame grows, is Anchor. Mm -hmm. Anchor, Anchor is yeah. the only well-established role. That guy clearly does the same thing every round and clearly follows that path. Um, but in regards to slaying, support, every, here's one thing I'll say. Everyone needs to turn up. Like There's a yeah. point in time in every single game where you need to turn way up and pull off a, a double kill, a triple kill for your team. Otherwise, you, you'll be exposed, like Blaze said earlier. Yeah, mm-hmm. same, same thing, Like as you mentioned, you know, coming from execution to escalation. It's because, because of this game type, uh, these players have to find themselves in situations that they may not have had to all the time before because 
coming out of spawn, you had your set strat, and you could, you know, you could sort of fill that support role, or hey, I'm I'm going for boom or whatever. But but now, um, like John said, you know, all of a sudden you got to turn up, you got to clutch, you have to fight in in for hills and and objectives and map control. Uh, therefore, again, it's going to expose players that you know the the people that are going to shine are going to be those all around players now, and uh, and as we've seen, you know the uh, the anchor role sort of define itself. That's another thing that everybody has to be able to do. Although you come out of spawn, you know, you may have somebody that jumps there right away. But, you know, once somebody dies, that player should probably be moving up and, and yep. moving to a different point of the map and someone else sort of fill that role. Okay, so it's a girl. constant rotation for everybody uh, to be as this one, you know, cohesive unit in Escalation. Everybody's got to have many talents. Next time on Front Spawn. They'll start pushing those envelopes, but they need they need a, a daring leader to actually call those strats because a lot of them uh, are not thinking outside the box to come up with them.